Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's masterclass. We are having a webinar on digital branding, and that is leveraging on the virtual marketplace to grow your brand. And uh, at this point, I'd like to welcome Felicitas for the opening remarks. Welcome, Felicitas. Over to you. Uh, thank you, Lynn. I will also take the opportunity to welcome all our participants in today's session. Today's session is titled, uh, it's, it's about virtual marketplace. How do we leverage our brand in the marketplace, in the virtual marketplace? So I'd like to uh, briefly give an overview of who Invest in Africa is. So Invest in Africa is a Pan-African organization and a partnership of network who are committed towards empowering small and medium enterprises, who we always consider as homegrown, that is African-owned businesses in various markets. Our key priorities as an organization is to improve skills, access to markets, and access to finance. Invest in Africa has a regional presence of over seven African countries, including Kenya and Ghana. And that is why we have Uganda on the team, because we are um, an African presence organization. As a network, we recognize the crucial role played by SME in driving African economies. We therefore convene such sessions like today with diverse stakeholders such as Mastercard Foundation, who are dedicated to sustainability and growth of SMEs through global economic crisis and recovering through the COVID-19 and the existing current global economic crisis all over the world. Our SMEs have shown resilience and together we are finding solutions towards business growth amid the challenges. More businesses have continued to go embrace digital online presence and therefore today's session is tailored towards brand positioning in the virtual marketplace. We want to understand do we, how do we leverage um, the virtual marketplace to grow our business brand. Uh, Invest in Africa has existing platforms. For Invest in Africa Kenya, we have a platform called Beshara.now. So on Beshara.now, we integrate vetted and credible SMS on the platform. We also build long-term capacity of MSMEs through better access to skills and finance. And we advocate for improvement of investment climate for SMEs. So in Ghana, the share of now exists as APP, African Partner Pool, and also in Senegal, the same platform also exists as APP. So our vision as an organization is to be a leading network for accelerating trade and investment in small and medium growing businesses in Africa. Our mission is to empower enterprises to create sustainability through jobs and by accessing finance skills and markets. So that is why we're here today, to basically to keep empowering our SMEs to create more jobs. And our purpose is to create Afri prospering African economies through sustainable development. So in the midst of the global pandemic, we have continued to have continued to ensure that our businesses actually keep growing and are sustainable. Our, our empowerment process is actually through access to markets, access to skills, and access to finance. So on access to markets, how do we do this? Through Bishara to now, we are able to have SMEs work who are actually existing and valid and legit because when we work with multinational organizations, they want to understand, do these businesses exist? Do they have the right documents? And therefore, we are able to do that through our Beshara Dogma platform. We also have a Beshara Academy, and in the academy, we ensure that all the sessions, all the projects, all the work that we think are important to our SMEs, we put it there. So it's a virtual library. The Beashara Academy is our virtual library where you can go in, look at all the past information that you need as a business, either in Kenya, Ghana, Senegal. So you select the country that you are in and you're able to look at the Beashara Academy. On access to finance, we work with various organizations and various um, 
organizations that actually have the finance. So we have Stambic, we have Equity, and we have also other funders who are not um, who give out grants or seed funding or capital ventures. So that is what we have on access to finance and access to market and access to skills. As we said, this is a project of potential the MasterCard Foundation. And our project, uh, under MasterCard Foundation, we had five key priorities. The initial one was masterclasses, a session that the one we are doing today. We've also had coaching where in Kenya we had over 74 SMS coach. In Ghana, we had a similar number, and we will continue to do that. We have also had access to finance as a pillar, and we had over 140 SMEs in Kenya undergoing access to finance. We also have the Knowledge Academy that we spoke about previously. The Knowledge Academy is part of our Biashara Academy. So all the sessions that we did on MasterCard Foundation, we have them on the Knowledge Academy. We also continue to encourage peer-to-peer -peer session. This is where we encourage that we share our learnings our challenges and the solutions that we have been able to to come up with we realize that businesses have similar challenges and sometimes the challenge that you think is so big actually someone else has already gone through and they have solutions so your learning curve as a business becomes smaller and smaller with time when you keep interacting with people of similar needs our impact so far is that we have been able to create at a, a 2300 jobs we have over 5,000 suppliers on Beshara.now and on APP. We have gained over 4,000 SMEs, and we have been able to give finance of 7.9 million worth of finance. So that is our impact, our short impact uh, within the short time that we have been in existence. And therefore, we are looking to have bigger impact with our purchase, uh, with our SMEs. So in today's session, we are welcoming Derek Banga. As I say, Derek is a guru when it comes to brand. I think um, personally, I've been able, privileged to see Derek speak in various events. And therefore, we are extremely excited to have him here. Derek is a regional director with Alpha Group, where he runs a confidential boardroom, meeting of SME owners who are committed to helping each other solve difficult challenges and evaluate opportunities to develop effective strategies for better professional standards and business performance. So the key question here is whether it's operational, financial, structural, or even personal, uh, David runs these boardroom sessions, confidential boardroom sessions, where you share your experiences and your challenges, and you get the perspective of accountability to help executives make better decisions and achieve more than they ever imagined possible. Derek is also a trainer, coach, facilitator with a company, Public Image, where he supports organizations, individuals for high performance. He has trained and worked with hundreds of individual teams and helping leaders, uh, entrepreneurs, and young people accelerate their personal and professional success through developing effective communication and interpersonal skills by helping them promote emotional intelligence, leadership communication, and executive presence skills. He has greatly increased their earning potential. I think as an organization and also as Invest in Africa, we have been privileged to have Derek in our sessions. As staff of I Kenya, we have had him, I think more than twice when he was speaking to us about how to grow our careers, how to position yourself as a brand. And that is where we're privileged to have him here. Derek, welcome. Felicitas, thank you very much. You read my profile word for word. That is amazing. Good morning, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And I am absolutely thrilled and delighted to be with you today. I have a few pertinent thoughts that I would like to share with you, and I'd like to do it in the form of a presentation. So I'm going to bring up uh, some slides onto the screen. I'm really here to talk about how to grow your business through smart branding. And, uh, you know, I, I wanted to start with a little bit of a, 
uh, of an engagement, a brain teaser, if you will. Uh, so I'm going to just do this briefly, briefly. So there is a tiger up there. And on this screen is also a hidden tiger, a hidden tiger. Now, this is an optical illusion that was making the rounds on the internet uh, a few weeks ago. And I thought it would be great to test and challenge your mental faculties. Can you see the hidden tiger? I'm not going to wait for you to give the answer, but in the few seconds that it is up there, please take a look and see if you can spot the hidden tiger. Oh, I'm not quite sure what happened to my presentation. So let's, let's get rolling, even as it comes up again. What, what would be the motivation for building your brand, your business brand, virtually speaking? I mean, we are now living in an unusual time where most of our communication, most of our engagement, some of our engagement is virtual. In fact, for the last 24 months, all of it was virtual. And so uh, the, the brand that you present, not just of yourself, but of your business, has also got to be able to connect with the people who are following you through a screen, through a phone. And so for all these reasons, I'm going to try and make this a conversation about how you can promote not just yourself, but your business brand effectively online. Now, I'll tell you what, I'll be the first to admit, I'm not a digital marketer. I'm not even an influencer. In fact, from when it comes to online marketing, I can safely say with hand on heart, that is not necessarily my area of strength. However, I do have a background in entrepreneurship. I run a couple of businesses. I do have a background in personal branding and that I've been doing for many years. And so I'm going to try and use those skills where I've helped, as you heard, many individuals and organizations to see how you can adapt to this virtual world that we live in and sell your business online. I want to share something with you. And this, again, just goes a little bit into my background. And when I grew up, I loved the superhero genre. I love superhero movies, superhero characters. In fact, hand on heart, I can safely tell you that as an adult, I cannot wait for the next superhero movie to come out. And I think there's a superhero virtually for every day of the week these days. So there we go. There's your Marvel Universe introduction. The reason I loved the superhero genre was because I wanted to have a superpower of myself. Now, the superpower I wanted to have when I was young was to be invisible. You know, when my parents told me to leave the room because they were having an adult conversation, I wanted to have the ability to listen in on that conversation. When my sister was on the phone in her room, I wanted to be able to eavesdrop and listen to what she was saying. And yes, regrettably, regrettably, even in school, in class, I wanted to sit at the back of the classroom and not be called upon by the teacher. But you know what? Fast forward a couple of decades later and look at the career that I have the most visible of careers. I mean, this is literally what I've been doing for a living for the past six or seven years is standing, literally standing in front of all of you, even though you're, uh, you're a virtual audience and helping you to become the best version of yourselves. And that's what I want for all of you. I want you to discover your superpower in terms of branding your business or even branding yourself in this brave new world that we are in. Please, I want you to find, find that superpower um, because for better or worse, this is the world we live in. Now, as I said before, I'm not a digital marketer, I'm not an influencer, I'm not an online marketer, but I do bring my experience of leading teams, my experience of communication skills, my experience of entrepreneurship to help marry that gap and to help you be seen, be heard, 
and be remembered for the right reasons. Let me repeat that again. Be seen, be heard, and be remembered for the right reasons. So if we're all on board with that, uh, we can get going and I can share some of these nuggets with you. Now, this was the agenda that I put forward. I may have changed it slightly. We're gonna talk about your brand, how to transform it and the benefits. Um, suffice it to say that I'm really going to be showing you how can you, you can better connect with the people out there. Oh, here's a story for you. There were two kittens that were playing around near a bucket of milk on a farm. This farm was full of kittens. These two happened to be playing near a bucket of milk. Now, as kittens are wont, they became a little too playful and they both fell into the bucket of milk. And as they were both in there struggling that bucket of milk, a couple of other kittens that were part of that farm came around and started speaking to them. Now, I'm actually going to hold this story in advance, and you will find out what happened to those two kittens at the end of my presentation. But I want you to remember this, the two kittens fallen into the bucket or the pail of milk. So what's one thing that you'd like to take away from our conversation today? Perhaps you can just put it there in the chat. Is there something specific that you'd like me to talk about? Is there a particular reason you decided to join this conversation? I would love to find out what, and hopefully if I can address it specifically, talk to that. I've obviously prepared something for you, but maybe there's something that you do want to take away. Please feel free to put it in the chat and uh, it may form part of the conversation even as we go through this. Felicitas, I'll just ask you to maybe collect those and um, you know, if there's anything pertinent to be addressed, please let me know. So somebody has said no sound, please. Again, I just want to make sure that you can hear me. Stephanie says no sound. I hope that's just on your end, Stephanie, and that everybody can hear me because that would be tragic. I've been speaking for five minutes. And if you haven't heard, I think that I've said that would be pretty sad. So here we go. The day you stop learning is the day you stop earning. And this is about increasing our cash. And cash, I've actually created a very sort of uh, smart, if you will, formula, which forms the basis, the, the underpinning, yeah, the, the structure, if you will, for our conversation today. And it's an acronym. It's an acronym. It's an acronym where K stands for knowledge. And clearly, this is about increasing your knowledge in the areas of uh, uh, branding, perhaps a little bit of digital marketing, perhaps how you can connect better, how we can leverage our brands to our target market. So it's about increasing your knowledge and overarching all of that, just in terms of a general conversation. Um, as the quote there says, the day you stop learning is the day you stop learning. And we should have this insatiable thirst for knowledge. We need to be a little bit circumspect and we need to be a little um, careful with information that we're soaking in, particularly as, you know, places like the internet, there may be things out there and perhaps are not helping us. But nevertheless, I, every day, my goal, even as I'm speaking to all of you, is to learn something new. All right, we'll keep it moving. The A is for attitude. Attitude. So what is your attitude towards putting yourself out there, making yourself visible? Turning on your camera, for example, during virtual meetings this is all part of the branding that we're talking about. Now, I know, I, I listen, I realize, for example, when it comes to specifically turning on your camera, some people are not in a position to do that because of bandwidth or there may be other things going on in the background. But I want us to begin to reframe our attitude towards promoting ourselves, promoting ourselves in the right way, putting ourselves out there. But it takes just a little bit of a shift in terms of mindset. And that's what I mean by attitude. Hopefully we have a positive mental attitude about our business, about what we do, about our customers. That goes without saying. But that a shift in terms of putting ourselves out there as uncomfortable as it is, and I'm going to address some of these issues, I think is something that all of us should want to do. 
And the answer is for skills. This is a skill. Just like your favorite footballer, Ronaldo or Messi, can bend a ball around a wall, or Stephen Curry can shoot three-pointers in basketball. They don't just get up and are able to do this. Yes, they may have an aptitude towards it. Maybe it's a particular propensity towards doing that. A gift, we might call it. But make no mistake about it. It is over and over and over again in terms of practice. Malcolm Gladwell talks about the 10,000 hour rule. You're going to have to begin to do this over and over again in order to make it an H, which is a habit. The habit of being able to promote yourself and to be seen, to be heard, and to be remembered for the right reasons. All right. Uh, I hope everybody can, can see this. Ah, okay. So, what kind of a sandwich is this? Somebody quickly tell me in the chat. What kind of a sandwich is this? What kind of a sandwich is this? Quick smart in the chat box. What kind of a sandwich is this? Okay. I don't know if this is an accurate representation, but this is one of my favorite sandwiches. Yes, a BLT. Thank you, Brian. A B L T. Okay, bacon, lettuce, and tomato. There you have it. One of my favorite sandwiches. But in this case, BLT is going to stand for your customers, your target market, <laughs> the people that you're hoping to sell your product to, indeed yourself, should A, believe you. That's the B, believe you. Okay. Second, the L is they should like you. Okay. We want to believe you. I want to believe what you're putting out there. I want to believe your brand. I also want to like you. Okay. Um, I have a tendency to do business, to buy brands, to purchase things that I like. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about positive and negative headlines, but likability is absolutely part of this. And the T is trust. We want to trust. We want to trust that what you're putting out there is the real deal and that there is an authenticity behind your brand, behind your business brand and behind your personal brand. So believe, like, and trust. BLT, the holy grail. Let's get that out there. Okay. So I have put up a number of organizations over here, well-known logos around the world. Uh, I believe across all of Africa here, we have participants. If I was to ask you, what is the reputation of these three iconic brands? Let's start with the one to my left, Safaricom. What is the reputation? If you could describe Safaricom in one word, what would that be? If you could describe Safaricom in one word, what would that be? One word, just put it there in the chat. One word to describe Safaricom. Okay. All right. In fact, why don't we go for all three? All right, okay. I'm just looking at the chat to see if anything is coming in. One word to describe the brand Safaricom. One word. Okay. Or indeed, if you wanted to describe Coca-Cola. Okay. Safaricom Kenyan. Well, thank you for that. Kenyan. All right. Uh, let's get a little bit more descriptive, a little bit more in depth. Certainly Kenyan. But uh, maybe talk to me about the value. Talk to me about how you feel when you use the product okay magnificent thank you <laughs> okay hopefully you're talking about safaricom all right how about coca-cola one word to describe the brand coca-cola i mean these are all iconic brands one word to describe how you feel about coca-cola how will you describe it what 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 that brand brings to mind immediately that you see it Okay, delicious. Thank you, Emmanuel. I appreciate your feedback. Okay, thirst quencher. Thank you, Marion says sugar. I get it. 12 <laughs> spoons of sugar in a bottle of Coke. Ubiquitous. Fantastic. Okay, using the product, adequate. Okay, and finally, let's go with Apple, the iconic brand Apple. One word to describe it. The word of mouth reputation. Okay, so each of these brands, clearly, through what they have done, their longevity, 
their innovation, their um, perhaps the the um, the people whom they're tied to sort of evoke something. I mean, you can be anywhere on the planet and you can mention either one of these brands and people will have a visceral or an emotional reaction. I can see them coming in the chat, secure, high-end, uh, sophisticated, and so on. I just want you to start thinking about your particular brand. What is it? What is the one word that you'd want your brand to be known for? Okay. So here's something that you may find a little strange. Let's put it that way. If you are not embarrassed by the first version of your effort, your effort to put something out there, your effort in marketing your particular product in the virtual world, you're not a little embarrassed by that first version. You started too late. And what do I mean by that? What I simply mean is that just do it like the Nike commercial says. Just do it. Of course, this conversation is about doing it right. But I want you to overcome that fear of saying, I can't put something out there because it's not perfect. I can't put something out there because I'm not quite sure how my market will run. Just begin to do it. And yes, and that's why I say that you might be slightly embarrassed by the first version that you put out there. It's not going to be perfect. It's all about a work in progress. Listen, these iconic brands that you listed are constantly reinventing. They're constantly putting something out there. They're constantly getting feedback from their customers and they're constantly changing and innovating, which is what I'd love for you today, but I'd love for you to begin to put yourself out of there. Okay. Yes, do put yourself out there. But now I want you to begin to do it with a little bit of intention behind it, with a little bit of thought process behind it, with a little bit of thinking about your customer persona, with a little bit of thinking about what platforms are you going to attack, with a little bit of what kind of tone am I going to use? Am I going to put out things that are more humorous? Am I going to put things out there that are a little bit uh, more serious in line with my particular brand? And some of these things we're going to discuss over the course of the next few minutes. But there is an intention. I want you to do it, but there's a little bit of an intention. So if I was to ask you how many uh, cells are there in the human body. So the human body, our skin, our organs, our hair, our nails, made up of cells. How many cells are there in the human body? How many cells are there in the human, <laughs> in the human body? <laughs> Feel free to type in the chat how many you think there are. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that I don't even think that number has been quantified because they're literally billions. Yes, millions, Elkana, maybe even billions. All right. Now, each of these cells, if you were to drill down to the molecular level of each of these cells, if you had a powerful electron microscope and you looked and you looked at the structure of each of those cells, you would see that each of those individual cells is moving. And when things move, they create a type of energy. So there's an energy that these cells are putting out. And if you combine that actually with perhaps how you, as a person, feel when you walk into a room and you encounter somebody who you don't particularly like, or it could be vice versa, maybe the energy that you give off based on how you feel triggered, annoyed, irritated, can be said to be, you know, catabolic, negative energy is what you're given versus the person who walks into a room and the room lights up. So there's a positive energy that that person gives out. Now, the nub of this is that there is a transfer of energy. There is a transfer of energy, okay? There is a transfer of energy in your product there's a transfer of energy in your personal brand. There's a transfer of energy in terms of what you're giving out there, even behind these screens. Right now, 
the energy hopefully that I'm giving off is positive in terms of my body language and how I'm using my voice and so on and so forth, the enthusiasm that I have. And how about this for a statement? The more attractive you are, the more successful you will be. Now, I, I just want you to think about that for a second. First of all, this statement might rub people the wrong way. The more attractive you are, the more successful you'll be. Isn't it more about perhaps my academic credentials, my technical know-how? It's got nothing to do with how I look. But what I really wanted you to think about and related to my earlier um, example of the transfer of energy is that your customers, your target market is looking to be attracted to your brand. Now we can talk about you as a personal brand, about you being attractive, but virtually you need to be putting out information that is attractive. You need to be selling yourself in a way that is attractive. Maybe you are the face of your brand and you need to be, as they say, the best version of yourself. It doesn't matter. We all came out of the womb, okay? <laughs> all of these companies are born of our creative and innovative thinking, but we've got to make it so that people will like it. Remember the BLT, and we like things that are attractive. We are, our brain, brains are hardwired to look for symmetry, to look for things that will look like they have a longer life. You need to be the best version of yourself. And you're kidding yourself if you think that that doesn't matter. And the sooner that you get to grips with that information, so whether it's your brand or your business brand, the more successful you will be. Okay. I, when we do these virtual um, sessions, sometimes particularly one like this where there's quite a few participants and perhaps the engagement is not as great as it can be. I always like to take a pause and to feel the temperature of the room. This is just my opening salvo. This is the first third of the presentation, plenty more to come. And perhaps in the chat, you can just let me know um, if this is resonating with you. Yeah, just put a yes or a why. If what I have said so far has touched a chord with you, has resonated with you, is something that you have connected with, is something that you can begin to use as you begin to put yourself and your business out there. And again, I'm just going to look in the chat and see. So, Musioki, thank you. You're saying yes. Okay. Again, if you feel this is something that so far has resonated with you, something that has touched you, thank you. Yes, from Marion. Thank you. Yes. Wakonyo, thank you very much. Okay, Donoki, yes. Brian B says yes. Thank you so much. I really uh, appreciate that that type of feedback. Okay. Yes, thank you, Ruth. So one of the things, again, that in terms of this attraction is we're trying to make sure that we get the attention of our target market. And now we live in a world where we are literally spoiled for choice in terms of distractions. These devices have changed our lives. They are possibly what we're using, but we also have to know that we are fighting a battle with people's <laughs> literal undivided attention. A webinar like this, cameras are off, people are possibly multitasking. So what are we doing to capture their attention? Okay. The average attention span of somebody who looks at an ad in Facebook, if it doesn't capture their attention, if it's not attractive enough, if we don't feel that we like it, if we believe it, we don't trust it, is literally seconds. And it's no wonder that many organizations have put this at the top of their list of determinants of business success, uh, business success least of which Accenture. Okay, so it's about understanding, it's about managing that attention, it's about keeping that attention in a world where people and everyday things are fighting for, for, for that attention. So 
if I was to ask you, in terms of um, your brand, your brand, your business brand, do your customers connect with this, buy this, okay, interested in this because of logic or emotion? Which do you think is the overriding factor here, logic or emotion? Logic or emotion? And by logic, we mean obviously the rational thought, that is our prefrontal cortex, that is our thinking brain that makes the buying decision or purchasing decision based on facts, based on data. Whereas emotion is right here from the heart. So what do you think? Uh, let me go to the chat. Okay, thank you, Wakonyo. So Wakonyo says emotion. And I think you may have a clue as to where I'm going with this based on already the tenure of my conversation and some of the things that I've shared. Is it logic or emotion? So it's a little bit of both, uh, Wakonyo. But you can certainly leverage on one to be able to make it easy for the person who is looking at doing business with you, um, certainly virtually. And that, of course, is, is emotion. So I want to share a, a, a clip. This is a clip of uh, a well-known entertainer, Will Smith, of course. And uh, I certainly hope that you can hear this and you can follow it. Uh, so let me just play it, and I would like you to give me your feedback based on the this particular clip. The first time I ever met Michael Jackson was at the BET Awards. And I wanted to meet him my whole life. And I saw him like, from across the world. All right, I just wanted to see if you can still follow it. And they grab me and they take me and run me across the room. And I'm looking, I can't see them. People are scurrying around. And it's all the girl. And I have no idea where we are. And he opens this door and he shoves me into like this dirty ass utility closet. Just like mops and. Okay, just give me a thumbs up or a yes if you can follow this. And if it is clear enough, I was on mute briefly there. Um, so just let me know and I'll continue playing it. It's a, it's a really short clip, so it's almost over. Okay. Thank you. Like bulbs swinging at the top. And I'm standing there. I got my head up against the door and I'm missing it. I'm running. He was swinging and all that stuff. And I was crazy. He's still in jail, right? Because they died. I don't know if you're going to and I turn around and Michael Jackson is behind me in the closet. I was like, oh, Mike? He's like, hey, what are you doing? Oh, sh what? hey, what's up, man? What do you think's going on out there? Uh, sugar, sugar, them, sugar, them tripping. Sugar's always tripping. All that success and he can't figure out how to be happy. Yeah, it's crazy, Mike. Do you like comic books? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love comics, Mike. I love comics. You know. I didn't, I don't know nothing about no comic books, but I got, I'm here with Michael Jackson. I ain't gonna tell him that. Yeah, I've got a Fantastic Four, first edition, number four. Wanna trade for that? I got the, the new edition. Uh, the Ronnie, Bobby, Ricky, Mike. Yeah, that's one's uh, first appearance of Ralph. I don't think I've read that one. So I got Michael Jackson, like captive audience, all to myself. Like, all the questions I could have asked, everything I could have said. What's the glove made out of? Uh, what's Tito like? Uh, can you move and walk forward? Is, is Annie okay? All that stuff. Blue. And then all of a sudden the door pushed open and security puts his hand on my face and shoved me out the way like he never saw the Fresh Prince. And he's like, Mike, we gotta go. And he grabs Mike, Mike goes to the door and I'm laying back in the mops. And then Mike looks and he turns and he makes eye contact with me. He says, bye Will, see you around. 
he goes off. And that was the only time I ever met Michael Jackson. I guess I got Suge Knight to thank for it. Okay. It just occurred to me as I was playing that, that I was the pre-Oscar Will. I think when we all knew and loved him. But nevertheless, the point of this was that that particular story that he told so well made a connection, I think, with most, if not all of us. And it used everything in terms of the uh, qualities of a great story. There was humor, there was passion, there was laughter, there were tears. And the point is, ladies and gentlemen, stories are the way to connect with your target market. Stories. You have got to begin coming up with brand stories. Each of those iconic brands that I showed you earlier has a particular brand story, a particular history towards them. And any successful brand, any successful personal brand has a particular brand story to help connect with the target market. Start looking for those brand stories. You've got to put on your creativity hat and begin to work with it. I mean, look at my brief introduction to this conversation. It was my brand story. It was about the superhero genre and how it motivated me to do what I do today. So brand stories are absolutely the way to go. Look for them. This is how you can connect better with your target market. The first and only time I Okay. The first and now, only time. Part of this is about having a self-awareness. That emotional connection is also about being able to look inside our brains, find out what our strengths and our limitations are, um, being aware of the impact of our particular brands. You know, your brands are targeting a particular market in a particular industry. There may be things going on in a macro environment. And so we want you to be present and not disconnected from your target market. So to me, all great brands begin with a the knowledge of self-awareness. Present, present in terms of being aware of their impact on their target market. Sit down, go through the positives that your particular brand brings to the table. What is it that your customers are looking for? And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But it starts with a little bit of this introspection or self-awareness. Because how your brand shows up affects how, obviously, your target market or your customers will feel. And how they feel directly affects how they will engage with you. Everything is tied back. Engagement is all about how do I feel? How connected do I feel? So what are you doing? What platform are you using to connect with your uh, target market and show up in a way that affects how people feel? Okay, a brand story, absolutely. And again, look at all of these iconic brands and look at the platforms that they're on and look at the ads that they put out there, the stories that they put out there, the people who talk about their brands. Everything is about how we target market feels. And that is the basis of any, if not all engagement with that particular brand. Now this gentleman here is a special gentleman and I wonder if any of you know, and I think the pictures may give it away, but there is something about what this gentleman does that is unique amongst, dare I say, most if not all professionals in the world. Well, first of all, what do you think he does? Um, and I think the picture may give it away. So this is uh, what we can call a sommelier. Uh, wine maker or sommelier, thank you, uh, Wakanyu. You're absolutely right. But did you know that of all the professions, the profession of being a sommelier or a master of wine, so it's actually a step above a sommelier, is one that is so unique that there are only currently 350 something odd people who can call themselves masters of wine. In fact, this process of becoming one involves a number of things. So for example, there's obviously a written exam that you have to go through. That exam has been touted as having the highest, as having the highest failure rate. 
part of the qualifications is to write a 10,000 word essay on one, one bottle of wine. Ask most people to describe a bottle of wine and it comes down to two words, sweet, <laughs> not sweet, right? So it's clear to say that this is somebody who is at the top of their game, who knows the industry inside and out and is part of a very, very select few. In fact, dare I say, so good that he cannot be ignored. And that's what we want you to become. We want you to become masters of your particular brand. Oops, sorry, I've skipped ahead. So good that your target market cannot ignore you. So good in terms of connecting with your audience virtually, so good in terms of branding yourself that you are one of a select few. Now, you may be in an industry where there are hundreds of people doing what you're doing. Well, what is the one thing within that particular industry that can separate you or separate your brand? What is that, as they say, USP, unique selling proposition? Robert Cialdini talks about the influence or the psychology of persuasion in his masterful book, Influence. That ability to get people to be on your side, the ability to get people to buy into you, the ability to get people to truly become an evangelist for you and your brand is what we're looking for. And it starts with some of the things that I have talked about, that emotional connection, the brand story being so flat out fantastic that your market has no choice but to follow you. So I think you are seeing a pattern here. Here's another optical illusion. <laughs> and this is of a woman. But the rub is, there are two women in this picture. There is a young woman and there is an older woman, or shall we say a more mature woman. Now, which do you see? Do you see the young woman or do you see the more mature woman? Do you see the young woman or do you see the more mature woman? Uh, young woman or more mature woman? Whom do you see? Maybe you even see both. I don't know. Okay. All right. Well, Konya, you see the young woman. Brian, you see both. What do you see? Do you see the young woman? Do you see the old woman or the more mature woman? Lim, you see the young woman. Stephanie, you see the young woman. Marion, you see both. Good on you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you have to squint or take a step back. Maybe even come closer so that you can tell out the features. Now, I'm not going to point out the features. Suffice it to say that this is a matter of what? Perception, right? Perception. Okay. You know, say what? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Ruby, you see both. Thank you. So it's about perception. Okay. So whoever created that wanted to create the illusion, the perception that you could use a young woman or woman. What is the perception that your clients are seeing about you? What is it about your business or about your brand? What is the perception that the target market is saying? And by the way, perception is reality. Very often, the way we perceive things is our truth. And that is how, you know, when we talk about fake news, for example. That is something that I have decided I am going to be in this bubble. This is all I want to see. This is all I want to hear. And that is my perception. And you can, to some extent, control the perception of how you want to be seen. Okay? You know, it could be I decide to put out certain information about my brand that lets people know that I am the best at whatever it is that I do. And you're putting it out on a consistent basis, of course. You're putting it out on a regular basis. You're you know, giving a new angle or twist to how certain issues are known. That's just controlling the perception of your target market. So if you were to begin to assess your particular brand, let's say your brand value, the reputation, how much your target market believes you, likes you, and trusts you on a scale of one to 10, where would your particular brand fit? On a scale of one to 10, what is the perception that's out there? Okay. Uh, how well known are you? 
Okay, now you don't have to put this in the chat, but if you have a piece of paper and a pen or even mentally, begin to assess yourself. Give yourself an honest score about where you are. You know, a lot of what is going around is about, again, Cialdini says it, influencing. And resistance is created from a lack of clarity. Okay? Your audience doesn't quite know what is going on. Old, young woman. So it's about being clear with your brand value. It's about being clear with your offering. It's about being clear with your unique offer that nobody else has. It's about being clear on the company purpose. It's about being clear on the company vision. All of these things going together. And for those of you who are with organizations where there's more than one people, two people, having those regular conversations with your team about the clarity of your brand. I'll say it again. Resistance is created from a lack of clarity. Okay. Part of that might be even refreshing your brand, redoing your logo. How many of you have picked up your, if your business is still around over the last 24 months, picked up your business plan and dusted it off and looked at it again. We've all had to change in this black swan of an event that has changed our world. Um, it could be everything from refreshing your logo to what platforms you're using to your business model. So part of that should be the conversation that you're having with you and your teams. Let's talk about customers for a bit, all right? Your customers have a choice, clearly, all right? <laughs> they can choose to go this way, they can choose to go that way, all right? And your customers, okay, are looking for <laughs> remaining consistent to commitments they previously made that are publicly answered. Now, what do I mean by that? People, your customers tend to remain consistent to commitments they previously made that are publicly answered. The buying decision for most of you is not done on the spur of the moment. It is something that somebody has been thinking about for a while, a decision to buy a car. Let's look at big ticket items, a car, okay? A house. You don't wake up and buy a car um, for most people. All right, it's something that you think about. You see, you have a conversation, you look at your finances, you talk to your partner, you talk to your financier, you go to your bank, and then you begin to do the research. And then finally, after all of that, you make that decision, go ahead decision to purchase that item, okay? So if you look at that in terms of how you are presenting yourself virtually, what is it that you are what is the solution that you're giving your clients who are not making a decision because they've seen you out for the first time? This just says, you know what? Actually, this is the organization I was looking for. This is the product. This is the service. And this is ultimately going to make it easier for me to make that particular decision. You need to be relentless with the collection of data. Relentless with the collection of data about your customer persona, who they are, where they are, what they want, how long it takes for them to make the buying decision, so on and so forth. Okay. Um, and part of that research just helps you to be able to then present your brand in a way that makes it easy for the customer or the client or um, your target market to make a decision to go with your particular brand. Oh, ah, <laughs> I went too far. The greatest ad ever created. Any idea what the greatest ad ever created? You saw it there. I gave you a glimpse. The greatest ad ever created. Okay. Well, since I let the card out of the bag, there it is. You can Google this. They laughed when I sat down at the piano. But when I started to play, this is a, an iconic ad um, that was in the newspaper, and we're going back over 70 or 80 years ago. Um, but anybody who's worked in the world of advertising or digital marketing should be familiar with this particular story about this particular ad. And what is it about this ad that made it stand out? Well, I'm just going to mention three things that are pertinent to this conversation that we have. I mentioned it before. 
our emotional desires as human beings. I made the decision to purchase something weeks ago. I'm going to pull the trigger. Maybe your ad is going to help me do that. But also it's about how does that ad or that particular post, um, you know, make me feel, you know. And that ad actually is about great copywriting. By the way, copywriting is something that you absolutely need to nail down. And if you can't, if you can't take a course, or you can't take a webinar, or you can't get someone, then bring somebody on board who can help you with copywriting. It's all in the magic of those words. And so we create headlines that are cliffhangers. Okay? Everybody thought that when I sat down to play the piano, and then they heard me play. The magic is in that cliffhanger of a title. And that ad continues to tell a story about a happy, successful customer. Okay? So those three things, the emotional desire, headlines that stand out, and the brand story. Okay. So let's just we're moving sort of into content. I mentioned copywriting, being able to, to, to put onto paper or put into an ad or put into a particular platform content that is going to connect with your target market. Three things here. Why me? What's the story? Why me? Why me? Why me as a customer? Why should I buy your product or your service? Why should I listen to you? Why should I give you an hour of my valuable time. That's your story. Why this? Explain the brand. Okay? Explain how this is going to help you, how this is going to change your life. In fact, why now? The benefits and the pain. The pain if they don't. Without this, you will lack this. If you don't use this, you will not succeed in this and so on and so forth. I don't need to use the exact words. You can, you all have your different products and your different brands. Why me? Why this? Why now? The benefits and the pain point. That is the magic. And an ad like that one before, I sat down to play at the piano and everybody laughed. But when they heard me play, beautifully covers all those three. Okay, uh, again, I just want to sort of pause for a moment. I'm sure some of you perhaps are taking screenshots or you're vigorously writing down, but again, just in the chat, if you can, if we are connecting, if so far my message is going through, whether you're as far away as Ghana or as nearby as here in Nairobi, just put a Y or a yes, a Y or a yes. I realize that some of you have not necessarily been um, putting something in chat, but just let me know with a Y or a yes, if we are connected. Come on to Kopa Moja, as we say here in Kenya. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Ruth. Yes, Wakonyo. Thank you. A uh, couple more yeses. Thank you, Alkana. We are together. Fantastic. Love it, Magdalene. Musioki to Kopa Moja. Stephanie, thank you for the thumbs up. Wonderful to see that we are hopefully on the same page. Thank you, John. Wonderful. Okay. We're heading for the home street, ladies and gentlemen. Hang in there, okay? What is it that your client wants the most? So this is just a continuation from the previous uh, slide that I'll share with you. What is it that they want the most? Okay? Again, that taps into the pain, the pain point, okay? Why do they want it? What outcome, what outcome can you get? And by the way, this is something that you can do even face-to-face let alone virtually, having a conversation where you're trying to, you know, get someone to um, uh, buy your product or service. What is it that they want the most? Why do they want it? What outcome do they get from it? Okay. All right. Headlines, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, 75% of a buying decision is done through what we first see. Typically, we first see the headline. Imagine, can you put yourself, visualize, 
Take a minute. What do you crave the most? The world is your oyster. Any good copywriter knows that the headlines are good to make or break. Okay? Particularly in this virtual world. Okay. So your strap line, ladies and gentlemen, has got to be on point. Let's look at some ideas. Positive headlines. How it changes, increases, mental, physical, financial, emotional, spiritual, you name it. Okay? What is it that they are looking for in terms of their mental well-being, their physical well-being, their emotional well-being, their spiritual well-being? Yeah? It's the emotional connection right here. Those are your positive headlines. And yes, we talked about pain point. Stop making this fatal mistake. And then you have the um, features and benefits. Okay, so avoid, reduce, eliminate risk, worry, mistakes, embarrassment, poverty. That is all something that you can use to create that connection in terms of your particular brand. Okay. All right, so I had this question planned out, but I've got one eye on the time, so I'm just going to skip it. I was just going to ask you if you're in a competitive market or if you're in a niche market. But a lot of times, sometimes we find that it is difficult to do some of these things because of fear. And for me, fear is forever expecting awful results. I know there's some other clever acronyms that are out there. This is the one that I like the most. <laughs> But we have got to be able to brace ourselves and go forward and even be slightly uncomfortable with a new way of doing things. So it's not about a new box or a new product. It is about how you package that box. Give the box a new name. If something hasn't been working there for a while, find, feel free to couch it as a new incarnation, a 2.0, the latest, an additional benefit, uh, an outcome that perhaps you didn't expect. Think right now about your brand, okay? Your product or service. Is there something that you can do in addition to the features and benefits that you have been talking about, that you have been putting out there? Uh, and so it's not about buying a new mousetrap. It's about giving the mousetrap additional um, benefits, if you will. I think I have a continuation of this. Yeah, increasing the desire, creating exclusivity, adding new features, you know, making it seem that it's rare, you know. Now, you know, typically some of these large organizations will do something, some discounting or something like that to make it seem like the good is scarce. If you do it and you overdo it, it can have the opposite effect but certainly putting something out there that shows that something is you know is is more desirable it's going out of stock is another way of reframing how you present your particular brand and increases that desire i think that's what we're trying to say here okay Home stretch, ladies and gentlemen, hang in there. Okay, just trying to get the slides to move. Ah, here we go. So just a couple of quick things, and these were sort of afterthoughts, but I thought I might as well include them there. I know this is part of the course for most of you. You're already doing this, but sometimes it requires just a reiteration, okay? And so this is about, you know, putting out the Google Alerts, finding out what's going on in your industry, your competition, your clients, so that you're regularly getting that intel, okay? Using aggregators like feely.com, keyword searches, I have that. So constantly, my feed is popping up and letting me know what is happening in my industry so that I can better position myself. I think that goes without saying. It's just listening up is what I've said it. 
um, talking about SEO. Okay, I think everybody on this call knows what the SEO is, search engine optimization. And there are courses that you can take on this. I'm certainly not an expert on SEO, but there's a couple of things that I can do. I can ask my customers what they um, would like to, to, to see or what they type in when they're looking for businesses like mine so that, you know, my company or my brand is the first when it comes to the search results on Google. Okay, using particular keywords, whether it's on LinkedIn or using particular hashtags. These are all very simple things that I'm sure, as I said, a lot of us are doing, but as I said, it bears repeating, just to make sure that we are front and center when it comes to that choice that our target market is going to make when it comes to um, purchasing our particular brand. Okay. This is something that actually for the last couple of years, I sort of let slide by. And now I'm getting back into it, particularly as, you know, business is sort of picking up again. And that is reviews, testimonials. This is a social proof is what we're asking about, ladies and gentlemen. Get people who are going to be evangelists for your brand, people who are going to talk about your brand. Ask them, go at them, and you can easily even be a little bit more creative get videos get pictures you know uh, ask them the specific benefit they got put that down and show it to the world this is why people do business with that with us go on linkedin and ask for those reviews ask for those testimonials put them on your facebook pages or the platforms that you're using i think this is something that we need to be a little bit more intentional with Okay, LinkedIn, briefly, LinkedIn. I copy pasted this <laughs> from uh, somebody who is sold on LinkedIn, as many of you are. Suffice it to say that particularly, say B2B, LinkedIn is where you need to be. And whether it is making sure that you are using the right picture, okay, uh, the background, so for example, at the top over there, that is prime real estate for you to talk about your brands, as you can see. The LinkedIn algorithm changes literally every <laughs> few months or so. And they're constantly adding new features like using media and how rich you can enhance, particularly your LinkedIn profile using media, videos. Um, video testimonials, uh, and so on and so forth. You can really begin to grow your network if you take a little bit of time every week to be active on LinkedIn. Now is a key word there. You've got to be active. You've got to be aware of how the algorithm works, and then you've got to start using it to benefit your business. Of all the platforms, this is the one. And it's not just me. It's also my, my business as well. So... You know, there are plenty of webinars that are out there about how you can be better on LinkedIn. You know, do yourself a favor, do one of those, and then begin to be a little bit more intentional with how you use LinkedIn. Okay, um, I'm just going to leave that for a second. Uh, and I want to talk about this gentleman, all right, whom you may or may not recognize, okay? So this is a gentleman by the name of Alfred Nobel. Alfred Nobel was a wealthy industrialist. And if that name sounds familiar, it, because, it could be because of two things. Number one, he, a chemist by background, created the world's most devastating, up until the time, the world's most devastating product called dynamite. So Europe was going through rapid industrialization. Dynamite was used to make these magnificent highways and roads. And dynamite was used to clear forests and rock. And unfortunately, Alfred Nobel became known as the merchant of death. Why? Because his product, dynamite, was being used not just for clearing forests and creating these expansive highways, but regrettably in war and was killing people at a rate that they had never been killed before. He walked into a restaurant one day and read his own obituary. The merchant of death is dead. Le marchand de la mort est mort. And Alfred Nobel decided to change the complete trajectory of his brand. 
And in fact, if that name sounds familiar, it is because now Nobel is associated with the Nobel Peace Prize and all of those millions that he had made, he put towards creating this magnificent um, um, uh, reward uh, for people who have changed our lives through peace. And I just use that story as an illustration of where you can begin to change and switch your brand up, okay? You can begin just like Alfred Nobel, and again, it's just, uh, it's maybe an extreme illustration, but it's an illustration of how you can begin to take charge of your actions. You can take responsibility. You cannot, let me repeat that then, you cannot take responsibility for results. There may be too many variables. However, you can take responsibility for your actions because there are no variables there. You either do it or you don't do it. You either begin to do it or you don't. You either begin to develop successful habits or you don't. You either reframe your attitude or you don't. Okay? Um, I love that quote. That's from Peter Thompson, uh, a mentor of mine. You can, can't take responsibility for results, too many variables, but you can begin to take responsibility for actions. Hey, remember those kittens? Did you forget about them? Well, remember those insults that the other cats were giving these two kittens? One of them decided to give up and drown in that bucket of milk. The other one was actually spurred on by those insults and began to churn that bucket furiously. And in churning, turned that milk into cream and that cream into butter, and then the cat was able to jump out. So which are you? The cat that lived to tell the tale or the cat that gave in? So, uh, as I close, I want to ask you a question. What have you learned or maybe relearned in this brief conversation that we've had? And obviously, limitations on time, you know, um, may have prohibited us delving into these a little bit deeper. But I wanted to give you a macro view, certainly based on my experience as an entrepreneur and somebody who's worked with some personal brands. So in the... Uh, chat box over there, something that you have picked up. Could be one thing, two things, three things, just something, just type in there. Something that you have picked up, learned or relearned. Something that has struck a chord with you. Something that I mentioned that perhaps you are going to use, like Alfred Nobel, to change the trajectory of your business and your brand. Just one thing. And I'll give you a minute to do that before I hand it back to... Uh, Felicitas, for any uh, particular questions, comments, or indeed feedback. So thank you. Branding is important, says Ruth. What your product looks like, what message it communicates can influence your brand success. Uh, Ruth, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Work on your same product, new box, Asante Sana. Importance of testimonials, Marion. You better believe it. Ken Boy, it's important to begin and to take action. Yeah, you know, I think we all know it, but sometimes it needs a preacher from another village to try and spur us on. Google Alerts, John, thank you very much. Updates on your sector and your competitors. Good one. Okay. <laughs> BLT for this, just believe. I like and trust. Ah, oh, the good old BLT sandwich. Love it. Thank you so much. Okay. All right, anybody else want to throw? Be active, more active on Google, LinkedIn. Let me tell you, Ruby. Yeah, Ruby. I know you are active on LinkedIn, so I know this is just something that you are re-emphasizing. Ruby's a good colleague. You must know your strengths and weaknesses. Thank you very much, Donuki. Uh, brand yourself. Once again, thank you, Alkana. Uh, Musioki, consistency, SEO, testimonials, 200%. You got it. Okay. Um, people will do anything for those who encourage their dreams, justify their failures, allay their fears, confirm their suspicions, and help them throw rocks at their enemies. Blair Warren. I, I, I hope the 
Black Panther is not is not uh, distracting you from those powerful words. Maybe I should have put them on a blank screen. Your target market is looking for you and your brand to encourage them. By the way, things that have not worked in the past for them, you say, this is the reason why it has not worked. Now try us. Anything that they feel that they are suspicious about, you're confirming. Yeah, I'm confirming that if you don't intentionally use LinkedIn, you perhaps are not getting the most out of your brand. I kind of knew it, but you have confirmed it. I lay their fears. And by the way, <laughs> the enemies of their business and their brand, I'm not literally talking about throwing rocks at people. I'm talking about what is not helping them get to the level of their success that your product or your brand can help them with. So I hope that is clear. I love this quote, and um, I hope you can take it to heart. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your attention. It's been an hour and a half. I have more contact information over there, but I will stop my share. And perhaps just in the last few minutes, if there's anything that you would like to, um, uh, to, to share or ask, maybe we can engage in that conversation. So uh, how do I stop this uh, for listers? I'm trying to get the presentation to stop. Oh, here we go. Stop presenting. Thank you so much, Derek. I think clearly we understand why we only see you're the guru of brand. You're very good. And you really have to your time. So, Felicitas, uh, I don't know if you're still on. I think it would be great to maybe hear someone if you wanted to unmute and just give me, like I said, feedback, question, maybe a, a comment or two. That would certainly help in terms of this conversation that we're having. I hope that's in order, Felicitas. Can she hear me? Okay, I can see a hand raised. Elkana, maybe you can unmute. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, in, insightful session. I think um, it is great that um, we are talking about um, branding ourselves and um, putting ourselves there out in the market uh, for us to differentiate our business from the rest of, um, of the players. So uh, the key takeaway for me um, in this session is um, as long as you have uh, decided a path to take, take that uh, path with a, a decisive action which will lead you to uh, interesting results that you need to achieve. Yeah, I, I agree, Elkana. Sometimes it's about pulling the trigger. You know, we kind of tiptoe around or we want something to be I say jump in with both feet. I mean, clearly we're talking about being a little bit more intentional, but um, very often that procrastination, particularly when it comes to putting your brand out there, uh, there's a little bit of that hesitancy. Yeah, you know, how do we do this self-promotion gig without coming across as you know, slightly arrogant or whatever the case might be. Um, I've heard all these sorts of feedback. So yeah, thank you for um, giving me that feedback. Um, I can see in the comments, Wakonyo, I do. I do love the comic book movies. Why? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. No, that's okay. I, I really love this uh, session and I think a problem, maybe I should say, because I'm Kenyan, is the fact of branding yourself or branding in a certain way can make you look disingenuous, you know, yeah. Yeah. where you're like trying too hard. So we tend to usually take a back seat. And I've taken a lot from this. First, I hate LinkedIn, yeah. but here we are, I guess. <laughs> we have to get into that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, if it's something that you're not used to, remember I talked about the fear of false expectations appearing real. There's a little bit of that hesitancy. 
even you know where do i start how, how how do i begin how do i how do i even begin to do it in a way that doesn't make me seem disingenuous to use your words but um let me tell you the world is not waiting for you <laughs> your close most don't get fed <laughs> um and some of us may have taken a hiatus i can include myself in that you know these last years were just about my goodness there's so much going on please as we say here okay yeah we're back baby <laughs> we gotta be back yeah thank you so much okay i have one eye on the clock i don't know team invest in africa how are we doing felistas i'm looking for you I'm here, Derek. Oh, there you are. <laughs> okay. We are doing good. We appreciate, I think, personally, and I'm sure the team also appreciates having you here. Mm. This one and a half hours actually didn't feel yeah. like one and a half hours. It just felt like 30 minutes. And <laughs> I think also watching the comments and the interaction that you're putting, as Rafonio puts it, you actually love comics, and I think I'll make sure to watch Pink, uh, uh, Black Panther today. So, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yes. So, before we sign off, everyone, kindly give us feedback on the link that we've just shared. Please, we would appreciate uh, the rating that you give Derek. The rating that you give Derek actually makes us invite him more. So, give us more feedback. And it, we would like to make it not just a fuss about Derek up from Invest in Africa. We would like to make it a fuss for you as well, that he will speak more if we give him five stars on the link. And we look forward to having more sessions with you. Thank you. <laughs>